Nice cover art. Nicer boobs. And welcome to episode 54 of Chit and Chon's Reassuringly Finite Gaming Playlist. My name's Chuck Rovers. With me, as usual, is John Denton. What's up? Uh, the format's the same as ever. John and I are going to go through two top 10 lists, the 10 games we've been playing over the last seven days. Uh, number 10s are the games we've been playing the least. Number 1s are the games we've been playing the most. Um, that's it. John, let's go. Number 10. Cool. Quick one to start. Uh, Wipeout 2448 on Vita. Uh, another PlayStation Plus deal it's sitting on there. I'd actually got rid of my hard copy of the game. Decided to download it because it was free. Um, played it a bit. It's still really fun. And then I decided to delete it to make space for something else. And then as I did that, I realised that it's no longer free. So that would be the only time that I'll play that game ever again. <laughs> and as I, as it was deleting, I was like, ah, ah, ah. And then yeah, that's over. But PlayStation Plus is awesome. I'll talk about it more in a bit. Okay. All right. Wicked. Um, so you, when they give those freebie games away, it's just for a short window of time. Yeah, you can keep them. If once you downloaded them, they, they, they'll they'll still work as long as you keep them. So on PS3, you've got a big hard drive. You just keep them for whenever. But I've only got an eight gig stick on my Vita because of the like, absolutely extortionate prices that they charge for memory on that thing. So I can only really fit sort of two because eight gig translates to like six point two gig or something. So you can only really keep two or three games on there at any time. Yeah, right. Okay, fair enough. Um, all right. Okay, my number ten is New Super Mario Brothers U on the Nintendo Wii U. Um, uh, we yeah we spoke about it a lot when it came out. I just turned it on because uh, there's a PlayStation 3 game that I played, which is later in my list. Um, I turned on the PS3 and there was an absolutely ridiculous update, which was a mm. tiny bit of memory, but the PlayStation 3 is such a... Whatever, it took me forever, so I just stuck the Wii U on and played uh, New Super Mario Bros. U on the gamepad. Uh, and I was just like, why don't I always play this? It's, it's superb. It's a superb Mario game. Um, because I played it primarily before it came out, I didn't see all the Miiverse messages that come up, come up after you die or after you complete a level, um, and some of them were really helpful. So that was quite cool. Because I mean, the, the, obviously there wasn't many of those around, uh, you know, when I played it initially. Yeah. Uh, but yes, yeah, a hell of a game. Really, really good 2D Mario game. What can you say? Yeah, no doubt. I need to go back to. It. I'm right at the end. Of the, yeah. I think I'm one world off the off the last world. I don't know. I had, I had good intentions as always do in Mario. I was like, I'm gonna get every coin, I'm gonna get every secret level. I don't think I'm gonna do that. I don't think I'm gonna have time, but I definitely want to beat Bows. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, yeah it's it's uh, I will um I don't know. It's nice to stick the old Wii U on again as well. It is, it was we'll nice it's been, later it's as well. It's been a little while, yeah. Yeah, uh, good old Mary. Uh, number nine for me is uh, Real Racing Three. I talked about it last week. I'd only just played a little bit of it and um the in-app, you know it's free and then it's all sort of in-app purchase yeah. type deal and I didn't find it too egregious playing more, it is very intrusive um, as you're driving your car will like uh, deteriorate basically like the engine suffers and the oil suffers and that affects its performance and you can repair it getting in-game currency but even when you get a repair you have to wait for that to, like two minutes for that to work or something like that so everything Eventually, you're just like spinning plates and all these time things just to be able to play again. And of course, you can pay for a second currency, which you also earn in game as well, but much slower. You can pay to speed everything up and keep playing. Um, the fact the game is free and is so good, it doesn't really bother me so much. I don't really want to play games that are built like this because it just doesn't. I'm, I think you know, I'm just from a different generation. I, I would rather lay down three, three or four quid for this game and just play it normally, but. The fact it's free in the first place, if that's the structure of the game, that's that's how it works. I, I, it doesn't bother me that much, and it's still it's still a really nice game. Um, I'll talk about it in a bit because I have played it as well. But I mean, if you have to pay for something, say you wanted to to bypass a load of things that were going to take two minutes, how much does that cost? I don't know. I didn't check. I think it it's just, I think it's quite. It's like sixty nine p for a pack of those things, and then you can buy or you can buy specific cars, and it, it does scale up, and you can spend fortune if you want. But it's up to you. When they, when, you, when they don't make you pay for it in the first place, it, it doesn't bother me. The only thing I ever worry about is when you see stuff like this and I, you worry that all games are going to be like this. And I think that's where the panic stems from. Yeah. But until that happens, and I don't think that will happen, when stuff like Assassin's Creed 3 is shifting 12 million and COD's doing whatever it's doing, FIFA's doing whatever it's doing, I don't think we need to worry about that just yet. Um, it seems to be doing quite well, though. There's loads of five-star reviews from people. Oh, yeah, like definitely. That. I mean, the last one's 
they were the top grossing ones ever, I think, or certainly up there. So yeah, this one, people love that series. Yeah. It's a lot of people who don't, who aren't gamers, traditional gamers, I think, you know, just got, got into gaming recently with their phones. Yeah. Uh, true that. Um, okay, all right. My number nine is an Xbox Live indie game called Galactic Fortress. Um, How do you find them? Well, I, well, I found it because you, you know you can't judge a book by its cover, but you pretty much fucking can judge an Xbox Live indie game by its <laughs> cover. Uh, that's actually not one hundred percent true, but um, the cover instant. It's an instant download. It's a guy. You know, not to be impolite, but he was a slightly geeky looking guy who'd drawn a woman on his arm and a sort of he'd drawn over his own chest to make it look like he had a six pack. Oh, so there's a photo of him? No, no, it, it's kind of like he's taken a photo and manipulated it, but he's right. drawn, a, drawn a six pack on himself and he's holding a massive machine gun with a girl on his arm. And I was like, that has to, yeah, it has to be good. Um, no, it's one of the worst Xbox Live indie games I've ever downloaded. Um, to be to, to its credit, though, it's actually it, there's a really good idea behind it. It sort of takes on the tropes of the modern military shooter, so all the class the class systems and stuff in the the game types are like capture the flag and whatnot. But it's all top down. It's like it looks like Gauntlet. Okay. Um, it just it, it doesn't work. Uh, but the, the the phrase that kept jumping into my head when I was playing it is bric-a-brac because all of the you know if you want to be a, a sniper. It's like a purple triangle or something. If you want to be a medic, it's like a rectangle with fucking prongs and a star symbol on it. It's just like, there's no assets. It's just a load of shapes sort of just to try and make things look like... It just looks like a fucking mess. Stickle bricks. What's stickle bricks? Those little bricks that used to stick together when you were a kid. Oh, yeah, exactly. Those little prongs, yeah. Yeah, but um, it, it looks... Hor- I mean, it just looks... It's ugly as sin. Um, the, your enemies take loads of bullets. You only take one to die. Uh, you can't tell where the flag is because the only mode available on the free trial is to f- capture the flag, and you don't know where it is. And you can't tell your enemies apart from your own team because you're just massive, massive sort of moving brick and brick shaped fucking mess. It, it's, it's absolutely diabolical. Um, it's a nice idea, and I can kind of empathise with the guy that made it because there must be a real temptation if you're just starting out making games to make something just so you can put it for sale. Mm. Um, but it shows a bit of a fucking uh, a lack of uh, self awareness because this nobody in their right mind would pay for this. It, it doesn't work. It's nice that you've made it, but don't try and sell it to me because uh, you're a nutter. Yeah, I mean a horrendous letdown, but a good idea, really. A nice cover art. Uh, w- nice, yes. I suppose you could say it was nice. Uh, yeah, I'm all for people drawing six packs on themselves. So. <laughs> yeah, me, that yeah, me too. Um, my number eight is uh, a game called The Silent Age, which was recommended by a listener on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, free iPhone adventure game. Did you get it as well? I did. It's higher on my list, yeah. Okay, I didn't get a chance to play that much of it, unfortunately. But what I did play, I really liked the style of it. This kind of like 70s, I don't know what you'd call it, but very 70s style. Um, it's a, definitely a point and click adventure with gameplay. I was worried when I started playing it, it was going to be one of those games where you just walk in a straight line but it actually seems to have little puzzles in it uh, a lot of intrigue I've just got to the bit where you kind of find out what the entire plot of the game's going to be Yeah. you know um, and I, I meant to go back to it but I just literally haven't found time okay. but uh, as a free download it's, it, it's properly a free game so even from what I've played I'd highly recommend it uh, for, for iPhone and iPad um, yeah The Silent Age you'll talk about it later and you'll probably be able to talk about it in more detail cool but, um, okay, yeah, we'll do. yeah very cool yeah indeed um, okay, my number eight is Need for Speed Most Wanted. It's blatantly not my number eight. It's my number one, probably, or number two. Um, but I don't want to talk about it very much. Uh, I'll just say this. After last, we recorded last week, as I said, mm. uh, you know, we, a load of us went to go and have a game. We all jumped into a lobby, and one of us couldn't join. It said that he had new DLC when all of us didn't. Uh, and it turns out that he, on booting the game up, had been asked to download a two and 2.1 gig update that none of us had been asked to do. Right. It wasn't in the store. We couldn't find it, so what we had to do was go all the way back to the dashboard, search Need for Speed, and go through, all, jump through all of these hoops to finally find it. Uh, it j- just as an illustration of how fucking screwed it is. I mean, it is, it is such a yeah. It's uh, it's as brilliant as it is. You get the feeling that EA are kind of uh, it's on the back burner. Um, yeah. I might be wrong about that but anyway that, that was just a, another illustration of how fucking stupid it is um, the new, they've given us a load of new content you get new billboards and stuff there's new um, uh, playlists for online play some of them are really funny some of them are just involve all of you diving no, just driving off off a hill by the lighthouse and just seeing oh, yeah. these cars flying into the ocean is funny um, and just this uh, I'm trying not to turn into Howard Hughes do, do you remember our friend Zeno with Crackdown 
Oh yeah, when he had to get every single orb, and there was one orb for about mm. a month. And I, you know, I remember I went round to his gaff, and the the, the 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 blinds were closed, and he was sat there like pace, a fa- pasty face, just walking around that world. I was like, I'm not going to let that happen to me. But there's one speed camera in Most Wanted that I haven't found, and I've played that game so much, and I've driven everywhere so many times, and the fact that I can't, I'm not going to let it start to bother me because there are moments where I'm just like, where is it then? Where, it must be somewhere. You can't highlight them on the map or anything like that. Uh, you know what? I think there must be a way. I think that you can download like a, a, a PDF. Or something from the internet which has them all marked now I'll I'll look into that when it starts to bother me Um, and driving around in uh, friends free play mode uh, me and my girlfriend the other day were just driving around looking for billboards, some of the new billboards are like puzzles, they're off the track and you have to try and figure out how to get to them, it's brilliant, I mean I still love that game so much but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's just it's it's stressful loving something that appears to you appear to be the only person that gives a shit about it uh, yeah, I know what you mean. I can't play that game ever again because of the amount of times I've had to start it from <laughs> the beginning through different work-related reasons. But yeah. uh, still, still got a lot of time for it, mm. no doubt. But yeah, even thinking about that opening sequence with Muse again, oh, it just makes me feel sick. <laughs> uh, number seven for me is ridiculous fishing on the iPhone, which uh, came out today that they were recording Wednesday. Um, I'd heard about this the week before, so I put out a feeler on Twitter. So I wanted some new iOS stuff. Um, and people started mentioning this game's coming out in a week and it's going to be awesome. And it is. It's from the people that made Super Crate Box, a game I haven't played, and a bunch of other cool stuff. They're called Vlambeer. And uh, it's, a, it's a game about ridiculous fishing. So what you do is you've got your boat and you press the screen and then that will drop your line and that starts going down. And you have to tilt the phone to dodge all the fish on the way down. Then when either a fish bites or you get to the end of your line... You start coming back up, and then you have to use the phone to grab all the fish on on the way back up, and you can grab an infinite amount. So you're just like moving the phone to grab all the fish, and then as you as it the line comes up, you flick all the fish into the air, and then you pull out a gun and you have to shoot them all. And then the ones that you shoot, you get money for. And then you go into the in-game store. There's no in-app purchases or anything. It's all in-game currency. And then you can buy like a longer line, or you can buy a shotgun, or an Uzi, or uh, like a chainsaw lure so you can go down and chainsaw things so things don't catch you on the way down and already from what I've played um, it's gone from being amusing to like really fucking really amusing and really entertaining in the space of about 10 minutes and if there's like four new areas that I've still got to unlock and uh, like much longer lures and the, the, the further you go down there's more like weird shit and then just chucking them in the air the music's so good it's like a it's like Streets of Rage music <laughs> it's just like fucking blowing up all these fish with blood everywhere it's um it's really good really really fun how much uh 199 when you say that there's no in-app purchase i mean can if you want to buy a load of in-game currency with real money can you not do that no that seems funny i mean i, uh, I, I know it's annoying it, but... it's it's old-fashioned in a way that the it's all structured around earning it properly you know yeah. but you're already within you know like i said 10 15 minutes i'm already earning decent money and unlocking the stuff it's properly balanced it's not it's you know it's, it's balanced in the old fashioned way before this stuff came in mm. and I highly recommend it to everyone already and I know it's only going to get better okay yeah and people are raving about it other people as well they've played more than me is there a free trial no no it's just a quid 99 but I'm normally a bit hesitant to put down even though it's only two quid that on an iOS game but it's one of those ones like I think Super Hexagon was that price as well and that was another one everyone was banging on about it and I certainly don't regret that mm. and I'm already not regretting this very cool Cool. Um, okay, my number seven is Real Racing 3, which we've already spoken about. Uh, it does look unreal. Um, it does look fantastically good. I mean, for an iOS, the fact that an iOS device is, is displaying that is, is quite remarkable. Um, the time shifted multiplayer element is very cool, um, although it is just basically. Um, uh, a set of uh, sort of shifting ghosts. It's a very, it's a very cool idea. Um, the the ratio of women to men playing it was quite surprising. I thought. I, I mean, I did three or four races, and every time I was playing against, you know, the ghosts of other people, it was always girls with pictures of themselves. I mean, it might be some dodgy bloke who's <laughs> put a fake picture, but it seemed like there were more, way more women playing it than blokes, um, which was uh, which was quite surprising. Yeah, I noticed that as well. Yeah, yeah that's weird. Um, yeah, I haven't played it long enough to gauge whether the microtransactions are really, really, uh, really bent. But you know, um, on that evidence, it's really impressive. I mean, just to see what's possible. If you have an iOS device that's supported, just download it and have a look because it is free. Um, but yeah, I'm the same as you. I'm not as bothered by games that are free outright, and then there's microtransactions. 
than I am if you're if you have to pay for it first as well. But yeah, Im- impressive as hell to look at for definite, and it's fun. It's it's sim- simple and fun. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely a nice little game. I um, I would rather it didn't have any of that stuff in, but then I wouldn't get it for free, and I probably would have never bought it. So Indeed. you know, what can you do? But yeah, it doesn't it doesn't bother me. Yeah, me but, uh, maybe if I was really excited about it and had played the other two, I think that's the thing. If I played the other two and they were just normal games that you paid for and you could play, and then suddenly the third one is this weird mess, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, maybe I'd be disappointed then, but who knows? Mm. Can't worry about that shit. Exactly. Uh, my number six is uh, God of War Goes to Sparta on PS Vita. Uh, played a lot of Vita this week, actually. Um, it's still really good, really enjoying it. I love God of War. Um, it's it, you know uh, people have talked about the story so far. I'm, I'm a bit confused as to actually what the hell's going on, so I'm not so sure about that. But maybe it'll turn turn a corner. But in terms of getting the the spectacle and the the combat and the you know the sense of like awe that God of War does better than almost anything, um, they, they've nailed it really. And it, it still looks nice on Vita, a little bit pixely. But uh, it was down to on PS Plus. It was down to like two seventy eight this week. Well, to celebrate the God of War launch, the yeah. Ascension launch, which is a bloody good price for a game that's really not that old, and uh, it, it's still very good. So yeah, very cool. Uh, I, I will just plug away at that until I get to the end, no doubt, because I do love me some crates. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. Um, okay. Well, my number six is a game called. Uh, do you remember I spoke ages ago about an Xbox Live indie game that had the best title of any game I'd ever seen? Um, Bureau oh, the... colon shattered slipper. Oh yeah, yeah. This is made by the same guy, a one-man band, um, and it's called Investigate This colon the Scourge of the Scarecrow. Um, okay. It's it's incredibly hard to describe. The game that it reminds me most of is um, Deadly Premonition, and I'm not a fan of Deadly Premonition. But in terms of the tone, it's it's kind of a mystery. Right. It's an interactive. The, the problem is that the opening part. I mean. Um, Bureau Shatter Slipper just it kept changing gameplay. It was a very interesting game that kept changing what it was. The opening of this, the opening ten minutes, is just an in, basically an interactive silent movie. It's kind of like a like a mystery or these two this duo of detectives and there's some woman being bothered by a possessed scarecrow. The visuals are really weird. That it, it at the same time as being amazingly sophisticated for um, Xbox Live indie games, uh, they look really old, old and ghostly. It's kind of if you imagine what photorealism looked like in like the PS2 era, so right. there's kind of the, the it looks impressive, but at the same time there's no detail on anything, and it just kind of the faces look like dead-eyed and stuff. Mm. Um, it's got the weirdness of a home, of something that's homemade. The dialogue is kind of a little bit off kilter, and there's just weird things that happen when you go to go and visit this woman. That one of the detectives goes, "Hey, free corn maze!" And there's this FPS sequence where you run around a corn maze, and uh, uh, you know, like a. A garden maze in a cornfield. I was like, that's that, that isn't even a thing. What the hell is that? That's it, it's full of weird stuff, um, and not self-consciously weird stuff like uh, which is how I felt about Deadly Premonition. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to buy the whole thing. All of his games. His name's Guy Gaylor, and he just makes you know he uh, he's done a whole load of Xbox Live indie games, and they're all 240 Microsoft points. I think I'm going to take a punt on this one as well. Um, yeah, but it's interesting. Because it's so, it's so clearly the work of one person that um, it makes it quite, quite fascinating, and could, could be brilliant after that. It's just it's difficult to gauge because the opening is literally a lot of dialogue um, and not much gameplay. But uh, I know, having played the other game, I'm sure it will change. But uh, interesting anyway. What's it called again? Investigate this colon the scourge of the scarecrow. It sounds like he keeps making like franchises, but he's never going to make sequels for them. Well, I tell you what, the, the weirdness of that, the, his titles are nowhere near as weird as the dialogue in the games. Really? It's just off kills, but not, not self-consciously so. It's not trying to be weird, it's just he seems like an eccentric person. Mm. All right. Worth a look. Yeah, I mean, there's the, you, you mine that store quite well, I think, because there's, there's so much crap and not many people, I mean, barely anyone talks about that. Yeah, I'm going, to be, games. I'm going to be bloody sad to see it go, I'll tell you that. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Um, right, my number five is uh, another weird game, but in a very different way. It's Metal Gear Solid 2 on Vita. The uh, latest PS Plus download for Vita is the HD collection, uh, Metal Gear Solid HD collection, where you get two and three. And, uh, yeah, so I decided to, to go back to two. I've not played it since it came out ten years ago or something like that. And... Uh, it's almost impossible to control. I can't believe 
that I've ever finished and you know and enjoyed this game. I'm and I'm still enjoying it weirdly despite the controls. It's like the fucking controls made by an alien. Yeah. Just to just to lean against the wall and peek round and pull your gun out. Something that is one button these days is like four different buttons and then if you're holding the stick it'll face the wrong way so you have to let go of the stick as you do it it's fucking backwards hmm. and I can remember I can distinctly remember because my, my brother must have been 12 when he played this and uh, so you got a lot of free time when you're 12 and I think he did it maybe three or four times on the hardest difficulty getting all the dog tags from all the soldiers and I can remember him being able to move through that world as well as you know you or I could move through Vanquish or, or, or Bayonetta or something like that hmm. moving up putting the gun behind guards back saying freeze and then taking them down for their dog tags and directing them god knows how he did that but I, i'm still impressed by how it looks on on vita it's cool it's amazing to have that in your hand yeah. and not feel compromised and uh i fucking it just reminds me of the time that i just loved games like this like metal gear uh, four kind of killed it for me a little bit and then revengeance is his own thing but back then those games were just fucking cool they were really weird but i mean they're so weird but not in a I mean, certainly in a self-conscious way, but not in a, like, deliberately, I'm a weird game, come and look at me, I'm wacky sort of way. They're just, yeah. The games were just weird then, and that's just what they were. And this, you know, this is definitely that. And just the first boss, there's, like, all these different ways you can do it. Almost like you can just shoot the boss or you can put it to sleep, and there's these little tricks that happen in the fight, like this shines a light on you, and suddenly you have to go into first person to shoot the light. Just so many cool ideas in every single aspect of it. And... uh I do miss that kind of, even though that that, that series that exists in four is still full of that as well. Even though that game is five years old, yeah, I, I, it's cool. It's just a shame, it's so fucking hard to play. Yeah, I remember when I reviewed the HD collection. I, I said uh, when I re- in my review, I wrote, "Don't play them backwards because you're ju- the, the the evolution of the control styles means that." To go from like Peace Walker back to three and then back to two, it would just—I mm. can't imagine anything more frustrating because yeah. it is they're, they're all so different. And you know, Peace Walker is by far the most straightforward. Yeah, because um, when three came out, it had the same controls as two basically. And then when they did the subsistence version, they put the third-person camera in, which makes it feel like an actual game. Yeah. Instead of the the weirdness, but yeah, going back to that. Uh, I'm getting my head around it because I mean I've done it before in my life and it wasn't a problem so I must still be able to do it but yeah when you're used to just jabbing one button to turn around a corner it's fucking mental but mm. yeah that's that's Metal Gear they're, they're not easy no that's true um, alright uh, alright my number five is Army of Two The Devil's Cartel on the Xbox 360 oh yeah uh, not the full version just the demo um, which came out a couple of days ago oh did it uh, yeah um, I have to say I've got Something always gets me about well, it's recently anyway. The fact that EA seem to be the only publisher that are still going hell for leather on big, dumb, expensive-looking action games, mm. um, and this looks really fun. I mean, it, it, when you consider how much I was kind of ambivalent about the first one, but the second one was trash. Yeah, really, just just brain dead. Unori- I mean, just there was nothing to recommend that game. Me and a friend just kind of shrugged halfway through when we were playing on calm and said, "Should we just not bother?" And we didn't. Um, it's absolute. I mean, it's, you know, I, I say the old one was unoriginal. So is this. I mean, there's a bit in the um, in the demo where you hold X to revive your buddy. There's mm. a bit where you bunk you bunk each other up to a high yep. ledge. There's a gun turret section. Um, but having said that, it does look nice. It feels good. Um, the shooting's really, really robust and nice. Um, the, dist- the, the, the it's uh, on the frostbite engine, so all of the, in- the the environments are destructible. Okay. So, so cover dissipates really quickly, and that's really, really cool. Um, and you can shoot enemies through through pillars and stuff. And on the gun turret set piece, you basically completely. Oh, dist- a gun turret set piece. Yeah, that's what I said, didn't I? Didn't I say yeah. that before? I did. Yeah. Um, but and you're on the side of a chopper. Who'd have thought it? Um, oh. Yeah, uh, you you to get these guys, you have to basically shoot the shit out of a building, and it just starts collapsing. And it looks, it, I mean, it's really it's proper blockbuster nonsense. Mm. Um, I really enjoyed it. I mean, it, it does know its audience. And I remember when I played it uh, months ago, and I was talking to one of the developers, and he he seemed to have his head screwed on. He was just like. We want to make the uh, video game equivalent of the Expendables. Um, the Expendables is a shit film, but I mean, what he meant obviously was that. Uh, 
it has to have the right attitude towards ultraviolence. It has a kind of sense of humour. If I, it, it, in terms of tone, this one seems to be reminding me of Fifty Cent Blood in the Sand, which is not a bad thing at all. No, not a bad thing at all. Um, it's at, at this point, it's far superior to to the last one for definite. And I, th- I will play it. It looks like fun, mindless fun, um, unoriginal fun. But uh, yeah, the only problem is, Gears of War's out next week, uh, mm-hmm. and we'll we'll talk about that next week. Obviously, um, if you've got an Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. There's, I'm sure I haven't I haven't played Gears yet, but I'm sure there's going to be no contest. But if you've got a PS3, it's it's a nice old school cover based shooter and it's big and expensive and stupid. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be fun, but uh, it seems like a strange franchise to really pump money into because I don't know. I guess the last two must have done really well. Yeah, maybe they did. Maybe they. Yeah, seems weird. Definitely, I was amazed that they they were making a third one after that. Yeah, me too. Horror show number two. Yeah. Um, but yeah, whatever. Um, it, it, I'm, I'm sure I'll probably end up playing it either for work or for some other reason, and uh, and giving up halfway through like I normally do. Okay, what is not, it? Not, not for work. It's genuinely uh, not bad. Yeah, my number four is uh, Assassin's Creed Three, a game that I've been playing every week, and I think I'm done. What's happened? Uh, I got to the bit where you get rid of, you stop being Hatham Kenway, and then you start being Connor, and you have to play hide and seek. Oh yeah. For ages, and I was just like, "What the fuck am I doing with my life? I've been playing this game for hours, and now I'm playing hide and seek. So I know how to fucking hide. This is like Assassin's Creed ninety. Yeah. I know how to fucking hide in a bush. Uh, I don't mind the fact that they're being a little bit bold in their pacing and all that sort of stuff. And maybe if I was more patient, I, I could hack it a bit more. But you know, fundamentally, I don't like Assassin's Creed anyway. Um, I've liked parts of this one, but when it was that, I did that, and then the next bit was. I was trying to rescue your mum from burning building, and it was. I was just. I can't do. I can't do any more Assassin's Creed, and yeah, I'm done. Uh, I went and and just played something more fun. Shit. Okay, that's a shame. Um, but yeah, I suppose it has. It has robbed a lot of people up the wrong way. So you know, fair. fair, yeah. fair but I mean, I, I just don't like those games. So it, it's kind of stupid for me to go in and the what is it the one two three four fifth 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 Assassin's Creed. To then suddenly expect it to to appeal to me, hmm. yeah, those games aren't for me. There's no point. My, my opinion is almost irrelevant. I think at this point, you know, because you just you ended up just fucking headbutting a brick wall after a while. It's like why why would you listen to somebody who doesn't like the game after five five games? Just shut yeah. up. It's like someone slating Saw Five that didn't like Saw One to Four. Just don't even talk about it. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, well, I'm uh, impressed that you had a part, had a go with it anyway, because uh, yeah, I, I did like parts of it. I like the way it started, definitely. The, the opening level was amazing, but yeah. Okay, all right then. Um, uh, my number four is the aforementioned The Silent Age, uh, rec- recommended as we said by a listener on Twitter, and I'm very grateful because this is not a kind. Of, this is not. Um, I don't think I would have happened upon this at all, uh, and it's not necessarily that it's something that I try to uh, I try and play anyway. Um, yeah, it, it, as you said, it's it looks like a point and click adventure, but it's not really. It's like an old style adventure game. Uh, you're not analysing the environment very much. You're always moving through it. Um, it's incredibly stylish. I love the way it looks. There's a really nice uh, an, uh, ambient soundtrack as well. Oh yeah. Um, basically, episode one is free, um, and then afterwards you're encouraged or you know you're welcome to donate. So, uh, to, to enable them to make uh, more episodes, um, I don't want to say a massive amount about it. It's impressed the hell out of me. It does. It, it is very reminiscent of sort of nineteen seventies conspiracy thrillers, uh, like Three Days of the Condor and the Parallax View and stuff. Where I mean, as a modern equivalent, would probably be that Will Smith film. Um, what's it called? What the hell was it called? Shadow. What the hell was that film called? I was trying to think of a really fucking shit Will Smith film, but I couldn't even think of it for the gag. Um, Oh my god! I can't believe I can't remember. It's uh, he, he, techno. Tony Scott. Uh, oh, he, Enemy of the State. Enemy of the State. Yeah, that's right. Um, so yeah, it's it's reminiscent of that kind of, but but primarily the nineteen seventies. It's familiar to everybody. Um, there's a, the intro is absolutely beautiful. Through a few uh, wordless frames, they just illustrate who the who the main character is. Um, and mm. you know he's just a, a blank face with a moustache, but I was like, I care about the guy already. It's so wonderful, it's so beautifully well done. That very, very, uh, very beginning intro. Very good, yeah. Um, I don't want to, you know. I just, I'll just say, if you have an iOS device, just download it. It's not the kind of thing I thought I would like. Um, it's very evocative, very, very. I, I loved it. The only thing wrong with it really is at the beginning, there's a little bit of too much toing and froing between puzzles. So. 
you'll w- walk as far as you can physically get in the world and it'll say oh, you need this and then you have to go all the way back to the beginning do that and yeah. it does that a few times which is a bit um, a bit tiresome but it settles down after that um, it's about you know it's about murder conspir- there's a conspiracy needless to say uh, time travel plays a part somewhere um, I will just say just uh, I threw I threw a few. Uh, you can d- donate in increments. I think it was three dollars, six dollars, twelve dollars, whatever. Uh, and yeah, I threw them a little bit of money, man, because I want to see another one. It's uh, I don't want to spoil it. That's that's. I just want to be careful not to spoil it. But I'd say if you have an iOS device, just download it and have a look. The first episode's free. Yeah, um, it's, it's well written as well. I, it is. I remember yeah. now the uh, yeah the, he he comments on you can you can sort of press a lot of the stuff in the world that's incidental, but the way he comments on it is is quite funny. Yeah. Not it's not a comedy, but yeah, it's quite sarcastic. Definitely not a comedy, but and there's loads of loads of sort of funny references to the fact that it starts in the past and then it you know goes elsewhere. But yeah, mm. I say I say you know support it. I think at least have a look. Yeah, I'm definitely going to get get through it this week because nice. uh, like I said, I enjoy what I played. Cool, cool. Uh, iOS again for me number three. <laughs> That was the worst rap ever. Um, is uh, the room? Have you heard of the room? My girlfriend's been harassing me to download it all day, and I haven't yet, but I will. It's it's fucking cool. I, I remember it existing, and then I forgot about it. Then it won the BAFTA for yeah. best best fucking game or something, best room. I don't know. And um, so we decided to download it. Um, my wife and I played it, in fact. And uh, yeah, it's it's just super cool. It's a uh, it's kind of hard to describe. You're basically in a room with a box, an old-fashioned Victorian-style, like, puzzle box, I guess. I don't even know if that's a thing, but that's what it looked like to me. And there are clues, and you have to move around the box and sort of manipulate different things using classic iOS interactions, little swipe here, little twist here, Uh, and that'll unlock another bit of the box, and you keep sort of pulling it apart, and there are notes uh, that you find that start to unravel a story um, really kind of intelligently written story as well uh, and the whole thing has a, like a kind of overbearingly creepy atmosphere and we've talked about horror a bit on this podcast and my problems with stuff like Slender which do scare you but I just think are really cheap mm. because it, you know, it's not hard to build up tension and fucking jump it's like those videos that you always used to show me where you'd watch a car driving around the corner yeah, yeah. and then the fucking thing would jump out whereas this is like there's no jump scares or anything like that it's just this overwhelming sense of foreboding done through the soundtrack mainly it's like you know you're, you're on like a clue and then you suddenly hear footsteps coming up some wooden stairs but there's no consequence to it but you know it was kind of shaking us both up which was cool considering it's just a puzzle game basically and um yeah it, it delves into kind of like it feels like that kind of i don't know anything about literature so i'm not gonna i'll speak out of turn but what it reminds me you remember the the raven the poem the raven yeah which i only know about from the simpsons <laughs> <laughs> but um it, it kind of reminds me of that like some fucking opium adult writer stuck in a room that's kind of like the story he's like a sort of scientist and it's like delving into to the occult it's really really stylish that kind of i'd say maybe poe but what what the fuck do i know um but the puzzles and the gameplay and the way it looks are brilliant it's it's free for the first chapter it's divided into chapters then after that it'll ask you if you want to pay a couple of quid i think to get the rest of the game um we did it and we were like yeah let's definitely pay and uh, very, 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 very good, very stylish, very cool, creepy, intriguing, clever, um, and classically built for the device. Get it if you haven't already. Yeah, no, I mean it's been it's been a topic of conversation this very morning, weirdly enough. Um, so I will download it. Is it? Have you got the iPad version or the iPhone? Uh, iPhone, because my iPad, it's I've got the first generation iPad, so uh, I don't think it would run. Oh, right. yeah, I think you do too, don't you? So yeah, it's fine on the phone. It would be better on an iPad, definitely. But I haven't got a, a beastly iPad, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'm sure uh, I'll speak more about that next week. Yeah, it's fucking cool. Nice one, nice Juan. It's uh, X Criterion guys as well. They made it. Oh, is that yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Those boys can program. Is there like a really, really incongruous pop soundtrack? <laughs> no, a couple of remixes no. of The Who, maybe? If, if it's Avril Lavigne in the middle of the box, I'm going to be very disappointed. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, all right, my number three is Tomb Raider. Um, I finished it. Um, I'm worried that I might, I think we possibly might have undersold it a little bit last week, because I do think it is just truly excellent. Um, and, it, you know, of these Uncharted, you know, Uncharted has spawned a whole host of imitators, Um 
even indirect ones. I mean, I, you know, it actually, it's unfair to, to, to always throw... Say that Uncharted is the sort of daddy of this genre because it's not really. I mean, every, that owed everything to the Sands of Time Prince of Persia trilogy, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, the whole climbing, all the, you know, the action mixed with the climbing and stuff, that's, um, it, it's, it's been done to death. And I basically think that Tomb Raider is second only to Uncharted 2. I think it's those two are the best. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Of the, of the genre. Uh, if you can even call it a genre, subgenre, I guess. Yeah, I know what you mean. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just know. it's just basically absolutely uh, absolutely superb. I mean, I love the way, uh, the level design was abs- completely superior as well. I like the way the environments kind of wind back in on themselves, and if you need to, you can use those torches kind of like breadcrumbs. Um, you could probably say, I mean, it felt like some of the locations directly referenced Uncharted, particularly the, the sort of shanty town on the snowy cliffside. Yeah, but if you're going to say that. Tomb Raider's nicking from Uncharted. I mean, it's going to go full circle because yeah, you know, of course. Um, there are the same usual inconsistencies. You know, you can burn this but not that. Mm. Um, there's branches blocking this way but not that. But the, you know, the usual stuff. But within the the sort of framework of, a, of an action game like this, it was just really. I thought it was great. And in rea- you know, we were talking last week about how suddenly Lara turns from an explorer into like a murderer. Yeah. Um, there were some moments in the campaign, primarily in the cutscenes, where, for example, some guys would be running towards her, and she'd use her shotgun on the ceiling, and you know, you block their route with a, with a load of um, masonry and rubble. I mean, there's only so many times you can do that, obviously, but just as a way of staggering that transition, I think they could have uh, used some devices like that, perhaps, maybe once or twice. <clears throat> um, also, in regard to um, uh, last week, you were talking about how um, it seemed really, really jarring when this small woman was overpowering these massive blokes yeah um one thing that i did think was brilliant and making you feel like you did genuinely have an exo- have an advantage over them was that kind of almost cat-like slink maneuver that you do to kind of dodge sort of dodge fire um mm. or walk up so it's like it was like a dodge move but the way it was sort of animated it just yeah it was like f- almost feline and you genuinely felt that that would be an advantage uh, over somebody with uh, with a you know superior strength, um, and the fact there was no cover. I like the fact that it was no snap on cover. You just kind of naturally hit hit the. Yeah, that's, I don't know how they managed to do that. To be honest, it was impressive. It doesn't ever fuck up. That's exactly. I kept looking, waiting for it to for me to be technically behind cover and to be spotted, but that never happened. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's excellent. The end. There are a couple of bits at the end which felt a little bit where the camera wouldn't allow you to see where you had to jump and I just had to keep jumping in every direction until I found the right way there was no mm. other way um, uh, but aside from that I just thought yeah marvellous uh, marvellous game yeah like I said I really I really did enjoy it I don't really have many faults to pick but I've already f- almost completely forgotten everything that happened in the game and I, I kind of knew as I was playing it it was just going to go in one ear and out the other and I was going to enjoy my time there but it's not going to stay with me and uh, yeah, I've still got the game sitting in my in my office, and I'm just like, oh yeah, I played that and finished it, and it's kind of washed over me a little bit. But uh, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed the the ten hours that I was playing it, and towards the end, the combat actually does start to get really good. Mm. Um, it is strange that she becomes the greatest killer of all time, but it's only when you establish a story that is grounded in reality that that stuff does seem a little bit jarring but it doesn't bother me it's a fucking game and you have to accept these things sometimes in games because they don't think the only solution is to build your game like something like The Walking Dead where you're losing so much gameplay just to you know just to inform a story and it should mm. always be the other way around true it but uh, yeah I mean it seems to have done really well so yeah good. it's good to know that these big names still have some power yeah. When uh, when other things are suffering, and it shows that you can't just turn a game into a big name. Like it doesn't seem that like Dead Space has done that well, and that you know you need to have that. Not everything can be massive. True, Dead. Yeah. made it. True, made it is. Uh, the number two is a game that I didn't think I was going to be able to talk about this week, so I, I assumed I'd still be under embargo, but I, I'm not. It's uh, Lego City Undercover on Wii U, which I played a ton of, uh, and I have a review should be up by now. Would have thought on video game or maybe the very beginning of next week um, you know what it is it's yeah. the open world Lego game the Wii U exclusive and uh, I really like it it's it's good, it's very good in fact uh, it starts off brilliantly like 
the opening cutscene is like hilariously funny. There's about four proper laugh out loud moments within that cutscene, sight gags that were just brilliantly written, perfectly timed. Uh, that it reminded me of like classic Simpsons. It was that funny. Um, it doesn't quite keep that level up throughout, but it never drops below chucklesome, and it's regularly laugh out loud funny. Uh, your main guy Chase McCain is a, is just a cracking character. I love him. It's like a sort of parody of every buddy cop movie wrapped into one guy, uh, really knowing uh, all the jokes are for the dads, really, but uh, just just properly funny. And the game itself is is, is a simple GTA clone, but the missions are in, in enclosed areas, so the missions turn into more classic Lego game puzzling, so nothing that's really taxing, but uh, it kind of everything pulls together in a kind of Rube Goldberg kind of way. Uh, in every level and every every level is really different as well you've got one where you're having to learn kung fu from this guy who's uh half morpheus and half uh, he's called barry smith and he's a plumber <laughs> but he's, he's also uh yeah he's also like this kung fu master and everything in there is just really funny in, in fact it's actually it reminded me of conquer's bad fur day but without any of the lewdness it's not lewd at all um but that kind of like regional english humor was is in there quite a lot and uh, yeah, just just loads of games, loads of great movie references. Some of them are kind of obvious and heavy-handed, but they're still done really well. Uh, some of them more subtle. There's like Good Mission Impossible Two, Sight Gag. There's uh, brilliant Shawshank stuff, and um, it's these sort of limitations in gameplay because it is a very simple game and it is a bit shaky on Wii U as well. It's a bit frame ratey, and you know the open world is cool to look at, but there's not really anything going on. It's not like GTA where you can stop on the side of a street and just watch. The, the NPCs interact with each other and crazy stuff happen. It's it's, it's more just like a canvas, but um, like the comedy is consistent enough and the the design is good enough that it, it carries it through definitely. And yeah, it, it, it's really cool. I've not finished it yet, but uh, I, I like. It. I don't really get the. It's got a very harsh review and edge, and I assumed that uh, having not read it at the time, that it was just going to say, "Oh, the game kind of falls apart after two hours," and. Uh, and I was like, I was going to be like, oh, okay, fair enough. I'm really enjoying what I'm playing so far, but maybe it just runs out of ideas, whatnot. But then, then I read the review, and uh, it was really, it, it almost felt sour and bitter, and it was uh, like anti the tone of the game, which anyone with a sense of humour, I just can't, I just couldn't imagine it because it's such like universal comedy. There's, it's just really friendly, amiable, and genuinely funny, and not in a difficult way either. That that really surprised me, but the other reviews that are coming out seem to be much more in line of, of what I'm thinking. So it's great to, for the Wii U to have an exclusive like this. Yeah, indeed. I remember when I first saw it at that um, Nintendo Direct conference, I was like, that just looks like that looks absolutely amazing. Um, and the, the Eurogamer review was really encouraging. The Edge review was weird. It was like it was written by somebody who was adamant to hate it, who was just out to to, uh, to shit on it. I didn't quite understand that. There's a real sort of. It's like his mind had been made up, and he was all of his. I, I don't know. It would just seem like a very, very weird piece of writing. Um, what, what do you? You must have an inkling about what you're going to score it. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to score as high as Eurogame is nine for me because the game is very simple, and uh, it's got all. The, you know, you can kind of play it with your eyes shut almost. There's like none of the puzzles are remotely taxing. You just kind of just play through the game. Nothing's difficult, but. Uh, yeah, I'd imagine it's sort of hovering around the the sort of seven mark. I don't think it, it can go higher than that. But one of those sevens, you'd definitely recommend to people. I wouldn't recommend it to say our mutual friends who are more into like hardcore shooters, whatever like that. But mm. for for someone who's more of a Nintendo gamer, you know, just uh, definitely definitely say to play it. So yeah, I haven't quite, and I need to get through to the end of the game. Mm. I haven't made my mind up yet, but there's not been a bit where I've not enjoyed myself. Yeah, cool. No, I mean, I, I have a feeling I'm going to really like that game. The only thing that worries me is that apparently there's no co-op at all. No, there's no co-op. That's bizarre. Yeah. It, to be honest, it does feel like it's struggling anyway, because uh, the Wii U is a strange machine with a, a slower processor than the 360, which I don't know anything about this sort of shit, but that seems weird to me, seeing how old the 360 is. But it's got more memory, apparently. Uh, that's what someone at um, Criterion, in fact, told me. But... Uh, the, yeah, I don't fucking understand. I don't even know why I brought that up, but it, does, <laughs> it, it, is, it is sketchy, it, you know, disappointingly. So when you're driving around, the frame rate is bad, but sure. uh, it's not like something you, you can choose to be bothered by. It, you know, it's not something that actually spoils the game. Uh, it's, that, that does make me wonder if perhaps Nintendo kind of put pressure on 
Traveller's Tales to rush it out because there is a real dearth of uh, must-have games on the Wii U at the moment. And it's the, you know, everyone's, I mean, everyone I know who's got a Wii U is just sitting twiddling their thumbs waiting for Pikmin. Yeah. Um, so this is, I mean, it looks like a nice stopgap. I'm definitely gonna gonna session it up. So. Yeah, and it is just constant gags. Like, I texted you, didn't I, after about an hour of the game, and I was just like, this is just fucking jokes constantly. <laughs> I don't mean that in that kind of, like, people from Chelsea way saying jokes. It was just literally joke, 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 joke. Everywhere you turn, constant gags, different styles of gags. Uh, brilliantly written. Very, uh, very funny. Yeah, I can't wait, if only, if only for the, for the lols. Yeah, it's pure lols. Pure lolsville. Um, okay, all right. My number two is God of War Ascension on the PlayStation 3. For um, Gone off to a really terrible start. I mean, every time I turn my PlayStation 3 on, I do think, what happened? It seems like, I mean, to be honest, I feel that the PlayStation 3, when it came out, was out of date when it mm. was released. Because I remember when I first got broadband, not long after I got a PS3, it made no difference because the architecture of the machine won't allow you to sort of have that much bandwidth. So I, there was a 100, a mandatory 107 megabyte uh, uh, patch for God of War. Yeah. You couldn't play it without it. Right. Um, it took 50 minutes to download. That's a sneeze of a download. I know, but half an hour before, I downloaded a 130 meg trailer on Xbox in less than a minute. Mm. Um, so that put put me off on a, you know, it was not a great start. Um, it even t- it takes 20 seconds just to create you a profile. The dial starts spinning as it, you know. It feels like it's been made backwards, that machine. Yeah, it's a weird one. I don't understand how so many people can love it, but it's different priorities. That's what the whole thing with PlayStation Plus. Some people think free games are great. I appear to be one of the only people on the planet who pays £40 for Xbox Live and feels that they're getting their money's worth because I play a lot of online and mm. I pay for the, the stability of that service. If, if they came on and said, yeah, you know, the service is down for 14 hours, I'd be like, what? That's why I pay for Xbox Live anyway. Um, but anyway, yeah, I started the game. I have to say at the beginning, I was like, this... That definitely, I mean, when you consider that Xbox 360's exclusives, namely Forza and Halo, are the best games look, looking games on the machine, the big hitters from Sony, this and I suppose you'd say Sony All Stars uh, beat 'em up, yeah. whatever the hell it was called. They, it's definitely a downgrade from stuff that's come before it. I mean, the cutscenes at the beginning of Ascension are quite, are quite scrappy. There's a lot of rough edges and jaggies and stuff, and I was like, this is patently isn't better looking than God of War 3. Um, it does get better, and I think that the real strength of it is uh, when you're in big battles, the way it captures all of those, you know, that's where the real oomph of the machine is, is most visible. Um, when you're, especially when the cutscenes get big, when you're doing battle with the Colossus, and I mean, the, those bits are still absolutely jaw dropping. Yeah. Uh, but I still don't think, on the whole, the game's as good looking as God of War 3. Um, it's very good. Um, it just kind of left me it, again this is different strokes the fact that I can play New Super Mario Brothers U which is a game that I've played a thousand times and still think I should be playing more of this and this is the fourth God of War game or the fifth that I've played and I'm just kind of like <sighs> it's a little bit I've been here and done that it's, there's not a whole lot that's fresh about it there are some jaw dropping moments um, and the story is kind of it's still as amped up and mental as all of the God of War games but there's less focus it just seems a little bit more Bit more of a sort of, yeah, a bit more uh, unsure of itself. It pulls um, itself together. By oh, it does. The end. Yeah, it's deliberate. Okay. Yeah, it, it does. It feels completely unfocused and messy at first, but then by the time you get to the end of the game, you realise why it was like that. It's just structurally a bit different. To, yeah. It makes sense by the end. Fair enough. Okay. Well, I mean, the, the, if you're the kind of person that likes God of War games, all games like this, this is a very good example of one. I just don't think it's better than God of War Three. Um, a Eurogamer described it as uneven, and I think that's bang on the money because it just there were moments where I was like, that looks absolutely, oh my fucking word, incredible. I can't believe that I'm looking at this in the current generation. And then there were bits where I'm like, ah, that kind of looks like a third party port of something where really I was surprised by how poor it looked but the actual when you're doing battle with like not, I don't necessarily mean the big colossi bits I mean the bits when there's like ten enemies and you're mm. that is captured perfectly with not a hint of slowdown nothing and it looks eye popping um, I haven't tried the um, the multiplayer yet so I, I'm sure I hear good things about it though and the fact that that's visually the best part of the single player means that the, the multiplayer is almost certainly going to be impressive as well um, a couple of things that I mentioned about Tomb Raider uh, there was a there was an instance where I kept failing a quick time event and then I had to go back and do it again and it just seems like such th- th- there's got to be an alternative to that because that just, just, I just ex- it exasperates me to the point where I just, I, I, I'm so close to just turning this off 
Um, but yeah, it's v- it's a very good God of War game. I just don't think it's as good as three. Um, and I'll speak about the multiplayer next week probably. Yeah, that, that's fair enough. I thought it was better than three, but uh, the reason I started banging on about why I shouldn't have really have an opinion, not that I shouldn't have an opinion, but my opinion isn't really worth that much on Assassins is uh, when I was reading all the reviews of, of God of War, and I realised this is the sixth God of War game, and you know ultimately this is the game. It's for God of War fans. It's for people who who love this series, and I am one of those people way more than any other reviewer. It would seem it, it's ca- it sort of captured something with me with the first game. I think the fact that I loved Greek mythology as a kid, like Clash of the Titans was an early movie that I saw that really uh, struck with me, and I watched it again as an adult, and fuck me, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> regardless, when you watch it when you're about five, it, it was mind-blowing, and I remember studying all the all the myths and stuff in school and, and loving all of that. So I, I think that's a large part of why I like it so much. But um, I definitely seem to like Ascension more than, more than most, but then again, it feels like it was... It's built for me, you know. It is, it's it's for the God of War fans. And I, what 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 really did surprise me is I've read almost every review online, and I'm the only person that I can work out that's noticed that they've changed the combat, that uh, that they've changed the parry system. Whereas I think if they had done that in a Devil May Cry or something that people play, uh, more reviewers more classically play a lot of that that would have been a big big thing. And I made it a focal point of my my review because the, the the fact that they changed the parry system completely to, to someone who's played a fucking lot of God of War that really changed the way the game played to me substantially it's like a big change in a pro evil FIFA to me whereas to other people they probably didn't even really notice that it had changed I didn't know yeah really. exactly exactly so th- th- that, that, that kind of sums it up but I think the people who, who are buying this day one you know the God of War fans and there, there is a sizable fan base uh, will notice that as well, and that will be a big talking point for them. So, it, it's kind of like it's funny when when this happens, and I've been thinking about that, and I'll talk about it a little bit with my my number one game as well. That when you get into um, sequels upon sequels upon sequels, as a critic, you start to if you're not, you, you sort of realise that you can't really talk about the game in the same way that you you can't talk to the audience unless you're part of the audience when it comes to the the, the fifth or sixth sequel I'm starting to think because you know when Assassin's Creed 4 comes out right my I don't think that what I'm going to say about it is going to be as anywhere near as relevant as someone who even as a reviewer has loved that series and and gone all the way through it and enjoyed it and understands it and understands where the developers are coming from and you know it, it's kind of inside that game uh I don't know. It's just something that I've just, that's kind of been jumping around in my head this week with the games that I've been playing. Um, okay, fair enough. No, I do think it's very good, and there are moments in this that you you just there are you know you do get those waves of like this is why I have a PlayStation Three in my house is for things like this. But did you not think that in terms of the presentation, it was a little bit scrappy? Uh, the, there's problems with the audio. There's like audio bugs where that that desync sometimes. But basically, as I was looking at most of it and. I just thought it looked fucking amazing. It was the day before. It was the day the PS4 was announced. I was playing it, and I was thinking. I kept saying to myself, "This looks like a PS4 game." Now, I hadn't seen what PS4 games look like by this point, but that that was something that I kept saying to myself. Um, I thought I, I thought it looked fucking amazing, uh, but I thought three looked amazing as well, and perhaps even more so at times. Mm. But uh, I really liked the pacing of, of Ascension as well. It reminded me of the pacing of of two. But then again, this is a. You know, I'm a pro Evo fanboy for God of War. It's different. It is different. I've played those games to, the, to death. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I liked it, and I'm going to persevere with it, and I'm looking forward to multiplayer. But uh, uh, seemed seemed yeah, something ever so ever so slightly sort of slapdash about it. But um, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's harsh because it's, it's definitely been three years that they spent on this since since three. They've been they've been fucking working hard. Yeah, so, it's, it's only intermittent. It, yeah. it's, it, is, it is only sort of in the smaller moments in between the big stuff, but uh, it did strike me as a little bit unusual. Um, but nevertheless, like I said, I did, I did, the, the, the game is ridiculously enjoyable at times, um, and I, I do recommend it. Uh, I'll speak more about it next week when I've, uh, when I've uh, finished The Bastard. For sure. For sure. Mm. Uh, number one for me, a uh, game I can't really talk about, unfortunately. It's annoying when I do this, I know. Uh, Gears of War Judgment, I finished the game uh, yesterday. Uh, morning, the embargo drops next week, so uh, it's the it's, yeah, no, technically is the game I played the most. I'm not going to say anything about it apart from one thing: uh, it's the anti Tomb Raider, and I will uh, explain what that means next week. 
Interesting. I've got. I'm actually going to make a start on it this afternoon. Um, so I'll, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll speak about it next week. Uh, that's interesting. The Angie Tomb Raider, eh? Yeah, I think I'll get in trouble if I say anything more than that. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Well, my number one is Battlefield Three. It's so far and away my number one. I think I've played it. If you took the rest of my top ten list and multiplied it by ten, I've still played Battlefield Three more than that amount of time. Um, because End Game's out. I, mean, I was playing it before End Game, but End Game's out. Um, and yeah, it's the final map pack for premium. Well, for everybody, but uh, you know, the f- part of the premium package. Uh, and God, they've really gone out with a bang. It's the best one. It, it really is the best one. It's almost impossibly exciting. Um, I don't know what it says about us uh, or what it says about dice or what it says about gaming, but the fact that an, uh, a mode as old as Capture the Flag can be as refreshing and just it's pure excitement in Battlefield. Uh, it, that, uh, there's a lot to do with that. I mean, the, the way the vehicles are balanced and these new bikes, they, they travel so fucking quick, but they can be locked onto by uh, lock on missiles and you can be destroyed without even knowing about it. But the terrain is really rough and up and down, so you have to be really skilled with how you're driving around. And it's just it. The, the, the new maps are brilliant. They're very, very long and narrow, so they're brilliant for rush as well. But you cannot be bombing. And when I say they're fast, have you seen how fast they are? No. If you, when you're hammering it on one of these bikes, I mean, it's it, you go so quick. It, you feel like uh, the well, I mean, I'm playing on Xbox. You feel like the Xbox is about to buckle under it because it's just like the fucking world is zooming past you. And you can, you know, I've, I've shot people speeding at high speed. You know, it, it's just, it's, it looks great. Um, but barreling in on a bike while all this chaos is going on, nicking the flag and then having your mate jump on the back and then just fucking hammering it. But it's, it's, it's so fun, I can't quite believe it. Um, God, it's brilliant. It's so brilliant. I mean, I know you probably won't do it, but you should just have a couple of games to capture the flag because it's obscenely entertaining. If I could stick it on and do that, then I would, but I've got to stick it on and download about 9,000 9 gig updates to be able to do it, yeah. and that'll take hours. It's worth it. So, uh, yeah. No, I'm sure it is, but I'm, I'm, I'm battlefielded out until four now. I've made my, made my decision, and it's going to be golden. You heard it here first. It's going to be, it's going to be really golden. Um, for four gold. Mm, well, you're missing out. It's it, utterly tremendous. So, uh, if yeah, but you... I told you, I, I'm basically walking around like a child in a room full of soldiers. When I play that now, because I'm so leveled down. Um, do you know Lionel? Yes. He bought Battlefield Three at launch and never liked it. Never really played it. He's not a shooter person. For some reason, he started playing it again, and he just bought Premium. And he just he's found things to do because he's not great at the shooting. He I mean, he mm. just ends up getting shot. So he does things like he just ferries everyone around and does, you know because there's so many roles you can take in yeah, Battlefield there are. Three. Um, and it just completely blows my mind. He texts me this morning. Let's play Battlefield. I'm like, what? Lionel playing Battlefield, fucking weirdo. But it, but that's how good it is. It's goddamn great, and I love it. Done. Battlefield Four, gold, gold edition. <laughs> okay. Right. Thanks very much for it. Li- that's it, isn't it? It is. So yeah, thank you very much for listening. Um, Fifty four in the can, ridiculous. Uh, check out the website, thefinitepaylist dot com. Actually, there's not really anything on there apart from the podcast, and you already listened to that. <laughs> so instead, check out the YouTube channel. And that's Chet and John on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter at John Denton at Chet Roivas. We're on Facebook as well, but then that's just mainly the the podcast. And you can, oh, another Twitter, uh, Chet and John's, if you just want the podcast links. What else can you do? You can come and tell us games to play. That's always good. Uh, it worked out really well for us this week. Mm. Uh, or you can just insult us because that's fun too. So uh, thank you for listening. Goodbye. Take it easy. Uh, thanks for listening. Battlefield 3 and gameplay it. Download the Silent Age on iOS. Done. Goodbye. Gold. Queen.